today I'm Africa's first waste to energy plant. And I have Nicholas here, who's actually my housemate as well, to show us around. He's been working on this project for the last two years. It's a really impressive project actually, so I'm quite excited to, uh, to hear what he's got to say. Thank you for coming. This is uh, the first great combustion waste energy facility in Africa. Uh, we are at 95% of completion, so it's uh, still an ongoing uh, construction site. Uh, when it is completed, hopefully a few months from now, we will take over 90% of uh, Addis Ababa's municipal waste. Uh, the only thing we won't take actually is uh, construction waste and hospital waste because it has to be treated in, in a different way. Well. So what you're looking at is uh, not only the solution to the waste problem, we will uh, also create renewable energy, 185 gigawatt, uh, uh, gigawatt hours every year. Uh, everything that you see here uh, between the, the metal wall and these two magnificent uh, Danish uh, chimneys, it's part of the flue gas treatment. It's the single most expensive part of, of this project, of the facility. So even if you're burning plastic, this will filter out all the bad it, it fumes takes, produced? It takes away uh, over 92%. Uh, oh, wow. So what you have going out is basically carbon dioxide and vapor. Uh, to put it in perspective, if you have the waste dump, as you see it there, and it's constantly burning, uh, I mean, like we talked about before, it's either because people are setting it on fire purposely, or like it spontaneously uh, starts fire with, with the plastic and the gla glass and uh, there's a lot of methane gas there. Uh, if you burn one square meter uncontrolled, it's going to release more dioxins and toxics uh, if you burn it for one hour than this facility uh, in a year. Wow. The fly ash is highly toxic. It's what we're taking away, what we don't want to be released in the atmosphere. So uh, that's two percent, and that is something that you have to bind somehow with concrete is the most common way, and then you put it back on the landfill. Uh, so today, I mean, a hundred percent of the waste is going into a landfill. When this facility in a couple of months is up and running, it will be two percent. So we re reduce it by ninety-eight uh, percent. It's a shiny tower on top of the hill. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, uh, but we, we will have a better view. That is actually our transmission line. We erected that tower and it's only 3.2 kilometers from the facility to uh, the main grid, which is extremely, uh, it's a very, very short distance if you compare to hydropower or wind power. Uh, and that is good because it's economical and it's also good because the energy loss in the transmission line, especially in a country like Ethiopia, is very high. It's 19% in Ethiopia. Uh, so it's very energy, if, I mean, you can actually use the energy that you produce um, more efficiently from waste to energy because the transmission line is extremely short when you compare to, to hydropower. Yeah, so this is where the trucks will come up. <coughs> the ironic thing is that the property value here is just skyrocketing more than anywhere else in Addis Ababa because this is a closed facility, you can live within 100 meters of ah. it. And the alternative, I mean, is, is this. So you say the people over here will be employed. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Uh, one like uh, secondary benefit with this facility is that the bottom ash uh, we're gonna use it for, like in in uh, uh, Belgium, for example, they they use it to build uh, water protection bricks. Uh, we are gonna. Build uh, and we're gonna use it to make interlockable bricks that can be used for road construction. And the goal is to involve uh, people now working as uh, scavengers at the waste uh, dump. They provide big, big bags like this to the subcontractors. So I guess these people are working for their subcontractors. And then they buy the big bags like this and they grind it down. Uh, and they sell it to Italy and China. They are helping out uh, recycling the plastic, which is very, very good. Uh, but it's not a good working environment for them because it's, it's very toxic and there's a lot of women and a lot of children working there. So we want to give them a safer working environment. The incident that happened over here, yeah. um, so as I understand it, there was a landslide and these people here that live below yeah. Um, but then hit with the landslide. Yeah. Um, so so, how many, what happened? How many people died? 
Uh, I think it was close to 200 people. Officially, it's like 156 or oh, something wow. like that. 176 okay. maybe even. And it's not like people, it's not only people who living or like were located on the, the dump site. It was actually like whole houses that got bur uh, buried. Wow. And it was happening uh, a little bit late in the evening, uh, like around eight o'clock. A lot of uh, like, a lot of the guys were out by then, but like the, the women and the children were home. So the majority of the victims were w women and children. Yeah. We want to be up and running as fast as uh, possible. And I mean, what's holding us back now, that, that's not a secret. What's holding us back now is that we're not getting paid as we're supposed to. If we were paid as we were supposed to, this facility would already have been up and running. Uh, and the sooner the better, because uh, it, it's dangerous. I mean, when you pile up bodies like that for 57 years, uh, accidents will happen. We are terrified because now they've been starting to pile up garbage. All this is fresh waste. It's since August 22nd. Uh, and it pile it up here. So we are terrified that it will be another landslide burying our water treatment that you see here. You see, so this is the unloading bay for all the rubbish that will be coming yeah. in. Yeah, so this is automatic doors. Uh, we're gonna see the waste bunkers on the other side. We're gonna see it from, from the inside. We're in the waste bunker. We're sitting on the waste crane. Um, it picks up 12 cubic meters of garbage in every scoop. That's about eight tons. Uh, the reason for the waste bunker uh, and the size for it is that we do want to keep the waste here for five days in order for the moisture to go out. That moisture is uh, garbage juice or garbage leachment, more and more correctly. Very toxic. If you drink it, you either uh, die or you become a superhero. Uh, what, what we do is that we uh, treat it in the water. Out from the water treatment area is just pure water. Waste from an office area, a lot of plastic and paper and cardboard, very high calorific value. Then you have at the same time on the other end, you have a, a truck coming in from Kera, the meat district, with uh, more or less only organic waste with a very low calorific value. So what you have to do is to constantly mix it. So you have these this beauties and they pick it up. Uh, the waste and they spread it out and then the waste cranes of course they pick it up and they they put it in the, in the boilers steam turbines so the steam that is produced uh, in the boilers pushed into the steam uh, turbines to basically reverse jet engines they spin around 3000 laps uh, a minute uh, and produce uh, the renewable electricity uh, and the, the flue gas is warming up the walls. The walls is warming up the water inside the walls, which is turning to uh, steam. And instead of building this three times as high, it goes like this, it turns and then it goes down. And from here it goes to the flue gas treatment. So that is what you see here. So there's a lot of this black liquid around from yeah. the landfill. Yeah. Um, so how are you planning on dealing with this and preventing it in the future? You might get uh, flooded with it. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, it's leachment from, from the waste. Uh, they're not supposed to dump waste here. It's a very, very, very big problem for us. But I mean, we can't really, we, have, we don't have the right to enter or touch this waste. Uh, and they keep piling it up. The leachment is pressed under this six meter wall, underground wall, pressed under and then pressed up. You can, I mean, you can basically see how it bubbles. Ah, okay, that's why it's bubbling, I see it, okay. This is how it looks today. This is every single African country today. Addis is no exception. Uh, but Addis is an exception that we are now standing, bam, solid on the future. Uh, and this is the future of African waste management, and this will soon be the past. Uh, so this is my favorite spot in uh, Africa at now. <laughs> right then, let's check it out from above. Pretty amazing.
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for See you soon.